The dinosaurs ruled our planet for around 165 million years. A tremendous amount of time when you consider that our species, Homo sapiens, has been on Earth for around 300,000 years. Over the course of the Mesozoic era, starting in the Triassic and ending in the Cretaceous, dinosaurs became some of the most complex, powerful, diverse, and awe-inspiring life forms the world has ever seen. In today's video, we are going to condense the entire timeline of the dinosaurs down to around 15 minutes, giving you a brief overview of the major events of the Mesozoic and the many amazing creatures that called it home. Sit back and relax as we take you on the ultimate trip through time to discover the timeline of the greatest dynasty the planet has ever seen, the dinosaurs. Around 250 million years ago, a small basal archosaur, a reptile that probably resembled both crocodilians and to an extent dinosaurs, ran along a lush green floodplain. Descended from reptiles that had survived the relatively recent Great Dying, the worst mass extinction event in all of Earth's history, this was an indeterminate generalistic omnivore. Although it didn't know it, this archosaur was imminently going to alter the course of natural history forever by giving rise to the very first true dinosaurs. These early forerunners, known as dinosauromorphs, were common in the Middle Triassic period, but were by no means the rulers of their world. They were small, speedy reptiles that for the most part would have gone unnoticed by the theoretical time traveler's naked eye. Those that succeeded in not becoming prey to the various large, dangerous reptiles of the time would eventually become the first dinosaurs. Like their immediate ancestors, the first dinosaurs were small, agile, bipedal, and would certainly not have been the top predators of their time. As of its description in 2013, the world's earliest known dinosaur may be Nyasasaurus perringtoni. We say maybe, as there is still some doubt as to whether or not this 240 million year old reptile was a dinosaur or one of the aforementioned Dinosauromorpha ancestors. Nyasasaurus, named after Lake Nyasa in Tanzania, near to where its fossils were first discovered, was about 2 meters long, bipedal, and likely omnivorous. A quick mover and lightly built, this gracile animal lived alongside dicynodonts and cynodonts, ancient relatives of the mammals, and rhynchosaurs, fellow archosaurs that somewhat resembled lizards. The first fossils that indicate an environment where dinosaurs had firmly established themselves can be found in the Ischiwalasto Formation of Argentina. Here, early genera such as Eoraptor, Herrerasaurus, Panphagia, and Eodromius thrived. These fossils show some of the earliest evidence of the dinosaurs splitting off into different groups. Eoraptor, for example, despite its slender, theropod-like build, is now widely considered to be a basal sauropodomorph. Its later relatives would go on to become the largest land animals our planet would ever see. By the end of the Triassic period, around 201 million years ago, dinosaurs had begun to radiate into distinct, recognizable forms, some of which have been immortalized in museums and the media. Coelophysis, the quintessential Triassic dinosaur, evolved in what are now the southwestern United States of America around 215 million years ago. Its fossils have been found well-preserved in huge numbers, which have in turn allowed scientists to reconstruct this little carnivore accurately. Meanwhile, in Europe, the sauropodomorphs were really beginning to establish themselves. Platyosaurus trosagensis, appearing roughly 227 million years ago in what is now Germany, was one of the largest dinosaurs of the Triassic, 
With its long neck and deep body, this animal would continue to pave the way for the giants of the forthcoming Jurassic to arrive. While the dinosaurs were beginning to rule the land in the late Triassic, another group of archosaurs were beginning to display adaptations that would allow them to take to the skies. Known from the lossy mouth sandstone of modern-day Scotland, Scleromachlis tayloris may be one of the earliest known ancestors of the pterosaurs. The later relatives of this tiny, long-legged reptile eventually took Scleromachlis's kangaroo-like jumping capabilities to new heights, giving rise to the first appearance of powered flight in vertebrates. By the end of the Triassic, Earth's skies had been flooded with the likes of Ptanosaurus, Celesti Ventus, Pachycnathus, and more. A little after 201 million years ago, the Triassic period gave way to the Jurassic a time when dinosaurs would begin to evolve into all sorts of huge, diverse shapes and sizes. Several major groups of dinosaurs established themselves in the Jurassic, and some would go on to thrive up until the very end of the Mesozoic era. In the early Jurassic, the first recognizable Ornithischian dinosaurs began to appear. The first members of this group would have resembled animals such as Lesuthosaurus, a bipedal omnivore that thrived in the early Jurassic floodplains of South Africa. Later, in the Middle Jurassic, Ornithischians would diversify to become some of the most successful large herbivores in all of natural history. Stegosaurus, with their iconic tail spikes and dorsal plates, roam the Mesozoic woodlands in search of lush plant matter to browse whilst ankylosaurs adapted tough, bony ossifications on their bodies to become extremely heavily armored. The ornithopods, perhaps the most successful and diverse group of ornithischians, arose during this time too. Meanwhile, some of the sauropodomorphs that had begun evolving in the Triassic started to take on entirely new forms. Adapting to feed on the tallest branches of ferns and cycads, these animals grew immensely long necks and colossal body plans to match. These were the sauropods, a group of giant herbivores that saw huge success in the Jurassic. In the late Jurassic Morrison formation of the western United States alone, fossils from Amphicelius, Apatosaurus, Barosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Brontosaurus, Camarasaurus, and Diplodocus have been found. Some of these animals, such as Diplodocus, were capable of reaching up to 28 meters, or 92 feet in length. The small theropods of the Triassic had also been evolving, and by the end of the Jurassic period, some of the first hypercarnivorous apex predators had risen amongst the ranks of the dinosaurs. By far the most famous of these is Allosaurus, likely the top predator of the Morrison Formation. Lightly built but armed with dozens of curved, serrated teeth, this was an animal adapted for hunting large prey, and it, amongst many other genera, began to do just that. Throughout the course of the Jurassic, carnivorous theropods such as Dilophosaurus, Cryolophosaurus, Torvosaurus and Ceratosaurus acted as the top predators in their ecosystems, helping to pave the way for the success of theropods in the forthcoming Cretaceous. Pterosaurs had also begun to diversify amidst the Jurassic too. Some, such as the Anurognathids, seemed to have evolved to suit nocturnal, insectivorous lifestyles. With large eyes and wide mouths, these bat-like animals fluttered around the dark woodlands of the Jurassic, while small Ornithischian dinosaurs passed through below. Other Jurassic pterosaurs, such as Rampharynchus, appear to have adapted to a piscivorous lifestyle, using their jagged, sharp teeth to pluck fish from the waves.
While the Cretaceous period is infamous for being the last act of the Mesozoic era, it is also the time that saw the highest degree of variation amongst the dinosaurs. Beginning 145 million years ago, the Cretaceous saw entire new lineages rise and fall. This would become instantly apparent in the Ornithischians. The Cretaceous period was witness to the continued success of the ornithopods and ankylosaurs, but also brought about the diversification of ceratopsian dinosaurs, such as Triceratops and Styracosaurus that had first evolved in the Jurassic. These frilled, horned reptiles became the dominant herbivores in many ecosystems, capable of handling tough, low-growing vegetation with their powerful beaks and replaceable tooth batteries. Throughout the Cretaceous, the world would play host to Protoceratops, Pentaceratops, Nasutoceratops, Chasmosaurus, Diabloceratops, and more. The late Cretaceous would also support the diversification of the Pachycephalosaurs, a group of Ornithischian dinosaurs that would favor bipedal stances, evolving tough, domed skulls which were used as combat display tools. Sauropods grew even larger in the Cretaceous, and some, such as the Titanosaurs, truly earned their names. Argentinosaurus, one of the very largest of the group, which lived in South America around 96 million years ago, measured between 30 to 35 meters in length, or around 98 to 115 feet. Some of these dinosaurs are firmly believed to be the largest terrestrial animals to live on planet Earth. Sauropods were an immensely successful group, lasting right up until the end of the late Cretaceous period. Theropods were perhaps the most diverse group of dinosaurs in the late Cretaceous. Amongst the groups that would find success within this period were the Dromaeosaurs, Abelosaurs, Truodontids, Oviraptoridae, Spinosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, Ornithomimosaurs, and Therizinosaurs. Some, such as the Tyrannosaurs, Carcharodontosaurus, and Abelosaurids, would become some of the largest and most infamous apex predators of all time, whereas the Therizinosaurs and Ornithomimosaurs would adopt herbivorous diets. Others, such as the Spinosaurus, would evolve to become specialized fish eaters, wading along the water's edge before snapping up passing prey. Groups such as the Dromaeosaurs would become generally small, slender, and fast, chasing after their prey before dispatching it with lethally sharp claws. High above, the dinosaurs' archosaur cousins, the pterosaurs, diversified too. Pteranodon deftly avoided the clutches of marine reptiles as it hunted fish in the western interior seaway, whilst giants such as the giraffe-sized Quetzalcoatlus hunted on the ground like a stork. The skies, cliffs, lakes, forests, and seas became abundant in bizarre, crested, flying reptiles like nothing else in the fossil record. Despite their success, the unforgiving forces of nature finally brought the Mesozoic era to an end 66 million years ago when the end Cretaceous extinction event, likely caused by the meteor that slammed into the Gulf of Mexico, caused all of these animals to become extinct. While the dinosaurs survived in the form of birds, many lineages, from the smallest dromaeosaur to the largest sauropod, disappeared from the face of the earth forever. In their wake was a world ripe for the taking, and it was our relatives, the mammals, that were able to adapt. A warm, forested planet would eventually become theirs, laying the foundations for the natural world as we know it today. The dinosaurs continue to be a source of wonder, inspiration, and amazement for people of all ages, and this doesn't show any signs of slowing down. Today, paleontologists have found themselves in something of a second dinosaur renaissance, 
and the amount they are learning about dinosaurs is increasing every day. Soon, humanity may be able to paint a very accurate picture of what life was like for these wondrous animals of the Mesozoic.